for all of you. It's a festival. Many, many people, more than thousands of meals are every we are getting that we would like to learn English through Smitra ma'am. Yes, today, ma'am, honor our request and ma'am, accept it to be with you. Many, many classes she will be giving you uh, on the English language, English language only. So friends, we will be connecting you through the Facebook and later on after 20 minutes, we'll be uploading all these videos in YouTube also. So friends, now I hand over the floor to the ex HOD of Usma University, Professor Sumitha Rai. Ma'am, please start, ma'am. Thank you, Gampagaru. Impact Foundation is doing wonderful work. And I feel very happy that I'm able to participate and give a little English knowledge to all of you. Now, I'm going to base whatever I say today on all the videos which Impact have uploaded on YouTube. Many times people ask me, which video to start with? What video to see? I would like to give you an example of a party. Suppose you go to a party. There are so many things to eat on the table. Now, do you ask which one to start with? Some people prefer to start with the sweet. So they take the sweet and they start eating it. Some others prefer to start with something bitter. Some others will start with Pani Puri or some such thing. Some others go directly to chapati or to rice. So it is only what we require, what we prefer, what is our choice. So look at all the videos which have been uploaded. There are many videos I'm told, although I have not seen any of them. Bharat, who is Gampagaru's son, has been telling me that there are 20, 30 videos. He's a very dynamic youngster who constantly helps with all this technology. He teaches me technology because I know English. I don't know how to handle this. Therefore, look at all these videos. Don't see them once and then say, I want to learn English. English is not magic. You can't learn in one minute. See each video 10 times, 20 times. Impact Foundation is doing it so much for you. So you have to help them by doing your share. Then go on practicing. After watching a video, if you write to me saying, Madam, give some suggestions for learning English, I feel very bad. I spent hours giving you, you did not follow any suggestion. Instead you say, Madam, I'm now watching your video or I have watched your video for the first time today, give suggestions. The suggestions are in the videos. Now for impact during lockdown, I will only do practically how to learn. All the tips for learning are there in the other videos. I will only show you practically how it is learned. In one of the impact programs last year, that was in Nalgonda, I think it was in February 2019. I showed a book, which I think thousands or 10,000 people have asked me on mail, Madam, what is that book and how can we get that book? It is difficult for me to answer all the 10,000 mails. So again, I'm repeating the name of that book, which I will use today also. It is called Tales and Parables of Sri Ramakrishna. You can take any storybook. You need not take this book. I have this book. I'm taking it. Take any book. Take any newspaper. Even the paper which comes, which has wrapped your rice or your masalas and it has come from the Kirana shop. If that has some English, you can use that for learning English. Don't think you need a single book. Many people ask, Madam, give us a book to learn. You cannot learn English from a book. One book is not enough. Read hundreds of books, but don't read the books only to 
get the meaning or to get the gist of what is being said. That is why I told you the easiest way is to learn from stories. You have so many e-books these days. You have so many things which are uploaded. You can just download and start reading. They are very inexpensive. If you have to pay 10 rupees, 20 rupees maybe, or sometimes free of cost. Impact is giving you. Instead of listening once, listen to these things again and again. Just now I gave you the name of the book. I can also tell you that it is available in centers of Ramakrishna Mart, Ramakrishna Mission all over India. If you don't have a center, you can order it online. Maybe they also have an ebook, then you can download it and read it. But I'm not saying this is the only book you can learn from. I'm saying that choose any book, but don't try to learn from one book. Do self-learning. So today I have chosen one story. This story is called The Chameleon. The chameleon is a, an organism which keeps changing its color. So this is a story. Sri Ramakrishna, you can read about him. I'm not talking about him now. I'm only telling you about the story in English. So first you read the story once or twice or 10 times. It's a small story, two, three hundred words. Then you have to look at the various aspects which are available in the story for learning English. For instance, you want to learn grammar or you want to learn vocabulary or you want to learn pronunciation, spelling or punctuation. Then this small story of 200 words can teach you everything. How will you do it? On email, I can't tell you this. On WhatsApp, I can't tell you this. So I'm going to use these lectures, which Impact has been very kind to call me and ask me to tell you. So please listen and follow and try to do it yourself. Don't depend on others for learning English. So the story of the chameleon is like this. A person goes to the forest and he finds that he sees a beautiful animal red in color. <coughs> so he comes and tells everybody, you know, I saw an animal which was so beautiful and it was red in color. So the other says, no, no, it is green. Somebody else says, no, it is yellow. No, it is white. No, it is orange. Like that many colors are spoken. Now what happens is, they all start fighting by saying that what I say is true and what you say is not true. So they say, let us all go and check. They find there is one person sitting under the tree who sees the chameleon every day. So they ask this person, they say, what is the color of this chameleon? This person says, it is all colors. It keeps changing colors. Now, what you can learn from this is a very important value. Apart from learning English, we should also have very good values. That is, if I say something and somebody else contradicts me, then I must first find out whether that person is right or I am right or both of us are right. We should never say, you know, I saw somebody doing conflict management on impact. I was very happy to see it because we have so much conflict in our life. That is because we always think selfishly. So here, the idea is don't be selfish. I hope audio is audible to all of you and you are able to follow. So this is a simple story. One person sees a red animal, others say, no, it is yellow or green. They go to a person who says it is all colors. Story is so simple. No worries about the story. But what is difficult? Difficult is language. How to put it into language? Many times I get emails which are written in Malayalam. I can't read. Although the script is English. Sometimes it is in Gujarati. Script is English. Sometimes it is in Hindi, which of course I can understand. And then they say, 
madam, I don't know English, how to learn? And they say it in their own language. You can never learn unless you do the practice yourself. So now I'm showing you how to do the practice. First, you know the story. So quickly, you do one reading, you know the story. Instead of reading, I have told you the story today. Now, I will show you how reading is done. This I did in one of the impact programs. Gampa and Bharat, who was all, uh, already in the US at the time, arranged a very nice program in a college where I showed them how to read. If you read English every day loudly, at least for five minutes, you will find that your English fluency is improving a lot. You can speak better, but nobody uses that. Nobody does that. They only read in their mind and they read quickly, skipping everything. So don't do that. Read slowly. Read the same passage, maybe 100 words, 200 words. Read loudly. That means making a sound. And read every day. Read slowly. Pronounce each word clearly. Even if you are pronouncing wrong, no problem at all. Many people say it's, Madam, we don't have cell phone. We don't have smartphone. Don't worry. I belong to a generation which did not see smartphone. Still, we learned English. I learned English without using a smartphone. So all of you can learn. Now I'm going to read these few hundred words to you. Please follow carefully. When you watch this program, I hope there is a button for replaying it, Bharat. Then replay this sentence by sentence so that you know how I read one sentence. Then you read that one sentence 10 times. Then you go to the second sentence. Like that, if you do, you will find that your pronunciation, your vocabulary, your expressions, your grammar, everything is improving without going to any special book only for learning these skills. Learning those things is very important. But that doesn't help you to communicate correctly always. So this is the story, which is on page 187. The book is called Tales and Parables of Sri Ramakrishna. The name of the story is The Chameleon. Once a man entered a wood and saw a small animal on a tree. He came back and told another man that he had seen a creature of a beautiful red color on a certain tree. The second man replied, when I went into the wood, I also saw that animal. But why do you call it red? It is green. Another man who was present contradicted them both and insisted that it was yellow. Presently, others arrived and contended that it was gray, violet, blue, and so forth and so on. At last, they started quarreling amongst themselves. To settle the dispute, they all went to the tree. They saw a man sitting under it. On being asked, he replied, yes, I live under this tree and I know the animal very well. All your descriptions are true. Sometimes it appears red, sometimes yellow, and at other times blue, violet, gray, and so forth. It is a chameleon and sometimes it has no color at all. Now it has a color and now it has none. After that, there is one more paragraph, which I'm not reading. I'm, I have read to you the main part of the story. There is a moral for the story, which you will read when you get the book or get an online copy. So how do we learn from it? First, I showed you how to read and listen. These are the two important skills for learning English, reading and listening. So while you're reading with your mouth, you are listening with your ears. Please don't only read and close your ears. 
Don't do that. Or keep your ears open and your mouth shut. Don't do that also. What you need to do is read loudly so that you can listen. Read it again and again. First, you replay and read along with me. Then you read later. Today, I'm not going to do this. I have done this in a series of videos, which again, Bharat has uploaded, he tells me. That was in another school, and it was a one-week program. So all these videos are there. I can't tell you which is the first video and which is the last video. Please don't ask me such questions. All videos are important. You choose which you want to see first and which you want to see last. So now, today, let us do how to learn grammar from this story. This is all which we are going to learn today. Next time I see you, I will tell you how to learn vocabulary from the same story. Then we will do how to learn pronunciation from this same story. Then I will tell you how to learn spelling and punctuation from the same story. So for the next four or five lectures, the story will be the same. I hope you remember. The story is called as the chameleon. When you listen to this, if you can listen again and again, as I told you, you can prepare your own script. Listen to two words which I'm reading. Stop the video. Write down those two words. Then what are you practicing? You're practicing writing, which is a very important skill. I have given many lectures on LSRW. Writing is very important. So what are you doing? You are reading, you are listening, you are writing. Everything based on some 200 words which I have read out to you. Now look at the first sentence. Once. The word sentence begins. Once. This is the beginning of all stories which are of an old age. We call it as ancient. So if we want to begin an ancient story, a story of the past, a story which has happened long back, then we use the word once. So once, you can see, is a part of speech which we call as an adverb. Once upon a time, that is what we say. A man entered a wood. Now look at this sentence. A man Look at the article. A, an, and the are the three articles in English. In this story, you will find many times these articles are used. Once you have this story with you, underline all the articles, see what function they are doing, and how they are referring to each noun, because an article is used only to describe a noun. It is used in front of a noun just like an adjective. But its function is to show whether there is one or there is more than one or it is general when we don't need an article for the same word. Suppose we use the word man. It means all human beings. So here the word man is used. I told you a man. Now why did I say a man? Because we are talking about one person, one individual human being. We are not talking about the entire humanity. If we talk about entire humanity, then we can use man. But today, there is a lot of gender equality in language. So when we are talking about gender equality in language, that means it is called gender neutral. That means we don't say man, woman separately. We say person. So we say people for plural. Suppose you say people, it means everybody. So this is a word which we have to remember that when we are using a noun to indicate one person, any one person, not specific, but anyone, but a single person, number is one. <coughs> then we say that it is a article that is indefinite article. Because man is a consonant pronunciation, the sound is consonant, m, therefore we use a. Suppose it was a vowel pronunciation, then we would have used an. 
that is a n because to pronounce a which is a vowel along with the next noun which is a vowel is very difficult therefore we don't do it instead what do we do we pronounce a n sound which is a consonant sound in the middle this you have to remember so imagine in so much time in 20 minutes i have been able to explain to you only two or three words of grammar can you understand how much from 200 words you can learn so i will continue like that now a man entered a wood that is the sentence i was using this is only part of the first sentence the first word is once then comes a man entered man is called as the subject of the sentence subject of the sentence is also always the person who is doing the work all verbs indicate that work is being done or there is some existence or there is some belonging this also i have done in great detail in some videos bharat has uploaded all of them i keep remembering bharat every minute so he will be able to guide you as to where these are if names are changed bharat and put you know exactly what is the item in that video then maybe it will help all the people very easily so maybe one day i will sit with you and rename all the videos that will be helpful to them so we have the word next word entered once a man entered entered is a verb enter is to go in many times we are we use the word enter into please remember that we don't say enter into is not correct when a person is going from one place to another <coughs> so here we are not using that a man entered a wood if you say the man entered into a wood <coughs> that is not correct don't get worried although i cough it is nothing related to covid my cough is a permanent feature of my life in all my videos you might find that i'm coughing so a man entered a wood a wood means a small forest the word wood here does not mean wood as we find in the trees that is another meaning of the word wood this word has many meanings one of the meanings which is used here means a forest so i will tell you more about it when i'm doing the vocabulary part of it today i'm doing only grammar so a man entered a wood is a sentence <coughs> although it is a complete sentence but it is not ending in a full stop because there is addition there again so you can imagine there is and and is a conjunction so wood is a noun man is a noun both of them have an article and that is an indefinite article a er, between the subject and the object all these things you require the only thing which you require in between is a verb so you have a verb enter since the story is the story of the past the old age then we have to remember that it is a past tense once i told you once means ancient so once upon a time that is a past story so a man entered a wood then we have the word and and conjunction joining two sentences joining a word to another word joining a phrase to another phrase joining a clause to another clause joining a sentence to another sentence so you can imagine a man entered a wood that is complete but it is some more information is there and saw a small animal saw is a verb now who saw there is no noun here so how is the verb come here the verb is already there a man so a man saw because entered is also same man saw is also same man we are using a conjunction i hope you are able to follow how the conjunction is making 
the subject unnecessary. This in English is called ellipsis. So we have removed the subject. Two repetition of the subject is not necessary. So we are not saying, and a man saw. So we are saying, and saw a small animal. Now look at the article. If it was animal only, the noun, a, uh, would be qualifying the word animal, which is the noun, then we would say an animal. We would not say a animal. Why are we saying a animal? Because in between there is an adjective small. So small starts with a consonant. Animal starts with a vowel. So we are not putting the article in front of the noun. Although the article applies to the noun, please remember, <laughs> the article is not for small. It is not a small, it is a, a animal. But we are not saying an animal because small has come in the middle. So the difference between a and an is the difference of pronunciation. It is not a difference of grammar. Please remember this. This is a very important point you have to understand. Most of us make maximum mistakes in the use of article. Therefore, I'm giving you so much importance for the article. Look at this sentence, which has such a small sentence, only few words, and it has four articles. So a small animal on a tree. On is a preposition. Preposition is like a special kind of gum. You know, it's a special kind of glue. It can stick. What it sticks is a noun to a sentence. So there is a noun, tree. It has to stick to the sentence. The sentence is up to animal. So it says on. On is a preposition, which is used for sticking. And again, a tree. So one tree, one forest, one man, and one animal. All are one. So we have used all indefinite article. A uh, is called indefinite article. So today we could only do one sentence. Imagine. Today we have done one sentence. I said I'll do half an hour. So I think half an hour is almost coming to an end. Let us read this sentence again. Once a man entered a wood and saw a small animal on a tree. I hope now you can identify every part of speech. From this sentence, you can write a few hundred sentences based on this pattern. You can use once. Instead of once, you can say yesterday. Instead of saying man, you can say child. Instead of saying entered, you can say went. So you say yesterday a child went. Now, instead of saying would, you can say something else. Now, went is a different kind of verb. It is an intransitive verb. So you say, yesterday a child went to the house or to a park. Like that, you can put the same pattern in another sentence. And saw, instead of saw, you can use some other word. And played. Again, play is intransitive. So you say, played with a small dog. Small animal becomes small dog or a big dog. <clears throat> you can say, on the grass. On remains the same. Tree becomes grass. So can you imagine? Now you can make 100 sentences and improve your English. English improves like that. If you know the parts of speech, if you know how they are used, then you can practice. Remember that learning a noun, learning a pronoun, or learning an article, learning a verb, or learning an adjective or a preposition is not going to improve your communication. You have to learn them and you have to apply them. It is like learning how to make a machine. No use learning only how to make a machine. You must also know how to operate a machine. I bought a cell phone, I bought a smartphone, but I didn't know how to use it. Then I had to learn from people like Bharat, you know, how to use the cell phone. The girl in the shop used to call me and tell me how to use for many days. 
she also saw the impact videos and she told me madam i have learned english from you so now i will tell you in english how you should use your smartphone that was my first smartphone s4 many many years ago so you can imagine unless we practice just by learning the rules we can not learn anything so from this one sentence i will do each sentence in this story like this i will tell you all the grammar items please listen to these grammar items explanation again and again i'm sure impact foundation will help you to listen to it again and again i wish you all the best and i hope to see you with the rest of the items of language based on this single story the chameleon by sri ramakrishna jai sri ramakrishna and thank you very much uh, for this first class uh, people are very very happy so many comments so many so many people are just enjoying it okay ma'am uh, okay are you able to hear my voice ma'am okay yeah very faintly thank you ma'am thank you madam we request you to kindly a lot at least half an hour per day is your convenient that people will come online madam any time 30 minutes yeah, per day i can't tell you beforehand yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, but i will like i told bharat today uh, so like that i will do and uh, you know, people will ready our all one yes. hour Enough, uh, whenever, 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 By 10 o'clock, if I tell you, I can do at 12. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, whichever day I'm free, I'll tell you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So, my dear viewers, and uh, just uh, request, uh, I request her, ma'am, on behalf of all of you, whenever she is free, she will give you all these wonderful uh, language skills to all of you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you. Ma